Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to RJ's for today's edition of Lunch with Monty Coleman. Last week, UAPB fell to Alabama State 41-21 at ASU Stadium in Montgomery, Alabama. This week, UAPB will have a bye week, and will return to action on Saturday, October 15th against Alabama A&M at Golden Lions Stadium in its annual homecoming game at a 2.30 start p.m. In their last outing, Alabama A&M fell to Texas Southern 34-31 in Houston, Texas. The Bulldogs currently lead the series 15 to 6. At this time, we ask the media, excuse me, at this time, we ask the players to introduce themselves to the media. Mr. Young. Well, how y'all doing? My name is Willie Young from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 21 wide receiver. Mr. Swain. Uh, how you doing, Cody Swain, uh, number 9 from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. All right. We'll ask the players to talk a little bit about last week's contest against Alabama State. Mr. Swain? Um, uh, well, last week uh, we had a tough loss against uh, Alabama State. Um, came out, fought hard, just ended up slipping towards the end of the fourth quarter. All right, Mr. Young? Um, I said the same thing Cody said. Um, it was a hard fought game, but they played harder than us that game, and, and we still got work to do. So we're just looking forward to the next game. All right. We have opening comments from the top dog himself, head coach, Monty Coleman. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, first of all, again, I just want to thank Ms. Nikki here at RJ's for allowing us to host uh, this press conference here. And um, it, like the guy said, it, it was a, a very physical football game on Saturday against Alabama State. Um, I don't think they played any harder than we played. Un unfortunately for us, they made more plays than what we made. Uh, we did have a couple of little uh, turnovers here and there that, that kind of cost us. Uh, I thought overall the guys came out. We were w very well prepared for the game. Uh, they just made the plays and we didn't. Uh, we, we can't fumble the football in the end zone for a touchback. Uh, that would have been 7-7 seven, if we go in in the red zone, or even 7-3, which would have given us the points that we needed. Uh, two seconds left on the clock. We've got to find a way to defend uh, uh, the receiver opposed to allow him to catch the ball for a touchdown. Anything other than in the end zone on that catch, you know, we go in and at, at, at halftime, at not uh, with them with the momentum. Um, you know, as we, as we sit back and we, we, we analyze the team, and that's what we're doing this week, we will work every day this week as far as practice. I will give them some time off over the weekend. But as I sit back and I look at our football team, I, I have to uh, remind us that we, remind the coaches that we're still a very young football team. Uh, I, I've got a council that I sit with, and we, we met on Sunday, There's several players, about 14 of us. And we talked about the youth on our football team. Right now on our football team on the offensive line, we've only got two players that actually played for us last year. And that, that makes a big difference. In the secondary, we've got one guy, Dave White, is the only player that played for us last year. Our strength as far as uh, longevity is the wide receiver core. And week in and week out, we, we've got Willie over 100 yards. We've got Cody over 100 yards. We'll have Hawkins. We, and, uh, Brandon is throwing the football very well. Uh, mind you that Brandon only played four games last year for us. Uh, so we're, we're a young football team. Uh, the thing that I won't do is uh, throw the, the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, we're going to continue to work hard week in and week out, week out in practice and uh, do our very, very best on the field. And that's the thing that I'm more proud of these guys about is they are giving me the effort that we need. Unfortunately, it's not coming. Um, it's, it, we're, we're not winning the football games, but we are getting the effort from the guys. We will get better. All right, Coach, what film have you seen on Alabama A&M as of right now? Alabama A&M is a, a very good football team. Uh, they're going to be a smash mouth type offense. They're going to run the football. They've got a big back. They've got a quarterback that's very mobile. Uh, he's going to probably be the most mobile quarterback we've faced thus far. Uh, they're going to try to run the football against us. Uh, that's one of the things that they've done. They're going to play more of a pro-style offense, uh, um, and, and they're going to run the football. So the thing that we've got to do is we've got to prevent them running the football. On defense, uh, they're, they're not 
quite as talented as they are on offense, but they're very good defense also. Um, they, they're going to play zone. They will blitz you. They will come off the ball and blitz you. But the thing that we've got to do is we've got to make sure that uh, we're learning our responsibilities in practice and just uh, playing like we've played in previous, previous weeks with the enthusiasm. And I think everything's going to be fine. All right. Well, at this time, we open up for Q&A. Mr. O.C. Brown. O.C. Brown with the Pound of Commercial. All right, Coach, uh, you guys had 23 rushing yards. Uh, is it, is it, would you say that's more of what the offensive line with the youth you guys have? Is it more of what they're not doing, or is it the running backs not doing their job? I think all of them are doing their job. It's miss, miss, that's kind of an illusion, O.C. Uh, we, we're a balanced football team. That's one of the things that I, when I talk with the coaches, uh, the offensive coaches more specifically, I want to be a balanced football team. If you look at the stats, we ran the ball 30 times, had 30 attempts, and we had 38 passing attempts. So that makes us a balanced football team. Now, if you look at and count the yardage in the sacks, the, the snap ball over the quarterback's head, all of that is taken away from rush yards. So even though at the end of the day it said we had 28 rushing yards, we actually had more than 28, but when you give up six sacks, and then you have a, a, a bad snap that I think, what, five, 10, 15 yards, whatever it was, it takes away from your running yardage. So um, kind of an illusion uh, with, with the rushes. Uh, we are going to run the football. We are going to get Dante McDonald in. We are going to get uh, Montgomery in. We're going to get all these guys in to run the football. Uh, the thing that we've got to do is we've got to also uh, capitalize on the run, but we also got not give up as many sacks as we have. OK. Uh, Coach, you guys accounted for 12 penalties for 168 yards, I believe. Uh, could you talk about what cutting back on the mistakes can do for you guys going forward? And it went us some football games because it seemed like to me every time we, we have one of the uh, mistakes, it's at a very crucial time. Uh, we were down on the two-yard line. We, we get a penalty, moves us back. Then we get a holding pin and moves us back even farther. Then we throw a bubble screen that he should walk in on. We miss a block. And then he fumbles the ball in the end zone. So the penalties are hurting us. And we realize that. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't have the resources to have officials at every practice. But the coaches are walk, watching. And we do make them um, do up downs afterwards if we get penalties. So it's something that we're very conscious of. And we know that we can't win football games having uh, uh, 12 penalties. Now, I will say this, and this is just my opinion. Uh, there were a couple of calls that I, I thought was questionable, very questionable. And both of those were like third downs and long for, for the opponent and uh, gave them a first down, which they went on and got points from. So we were ready to come off the field. And just my opinion, just watching it, watching it on film, I thought that they were very questionable. But, uh, you know, I mean, we're human. Things going to happen. Uh, the thing that we've got to do is make sure that we don't put ourselves in those uh, situations. Okay. Coach, on third downs, you guys were 6 for 13, which isn't that bad. Uh, it's about almost 50%. Could you talk about getting better on third downs and staying on the field uh, offensively-wise? I mean, our goal is to be about 50%. So that's we're, we're right on track. But we want to convert every third down. We realize by converting thirds down, third downs that we're prolonging the drives. Yeah. So the other thing would be is not to get in third downs. Uh, score on first and second down. Uh, but yes, we are very conscious of our third down. Efficiency, that's one of the stats that I look at every week, both offensively and defensively, because we've got to get them off the field also. And uh, sometimes we've let them uh, stay on the field a little long on third down. So um, it is something that we're looking at and something that we will be working on again this week. OK, one more question, because uh, defensively, uh, for the past couple of weeks, I think you guys have uh, given up over 100 rushing yards to, to uh, opposing teams running back. Could you talk about uh, defending the run and uh, sewing that up a little more in that area? You know, that, that's, that's, you hit me in the heart right there because I, I'm, I'm a part of the defense. But you're absolutely right. And that's one thing that we pride ourselves on is preventing teams to run against us. And my answer to that question is we're trying to do too much. Uh, I'm talking about the defensive line and the linebackers. Um, mostly the defensive line, they're getting out of their gap. We're gap control defense. And sometimes because they may, may have had a run 
uh, a successful run. Now I want to do a little bit more, and I get out of my gap, and guess what? Guess where they run it at? In the gap that I'm supposed to be at, and there's nobody there. So it's something that we're going to get back to basics. We're going to self-evaluate ourselves this week um, and, and hopefully get back on track as far as stopping the run. We want to make a team, an offensive team, one-dimensional, and that's throwing the football. We don't want them running and throwing. And unfortunately for us, we weren't able to um, – um, uh, stop the run on Saturday. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Yes, Mr. Tim Stubbs. I'll make this quick and then hand it over to Bubba here in just a second. Um, Coach, I thought the uh, most pivotal part of the game when you look back at it was the final minute of the first half. 14-7 game. You punt it. The personal foul happens. They go from the 50 to the 35. They have no timeouts. Talk about that because if you stop them there, you get the ball to start the second half. You go down and score to start the second half. It could be a 14-all game instead of you're chasing that touchdown. It seemed like the whole second half you were just trading punches and trying to chase that touchdown. Uh, talk about that swing there. You had a chance to get a, a two for one instead. They score on the last play of the half. And you know, it, it played in my favor. You know, I, I deferred the football because I like for our offense to come back out the third quarter uh, with the football. We, we've, we've proven that we can drive the ball, uh, the opening drive of the third quarter, uh, take a lot of time off the clock. And that's what we were hoping for this game. Unfortunately for us, you know, it, it's two seconds left on the clock. Uh, we had a penalty that I gave them possession back. They, they, they spiked the ball. Was there a question there? There, there was a question, but it, it shouldn't have been. Uh, the rule is you can't spike the ball under three seconds. It was not under three seconds uh, when he spiked the ball. So that, that was fine. Uh, but the thing that we've got to do is we've got to know the time on the clock. We've got to know what we're trying to do defensively. And uh, we can't allow points uh, to be scored right before the half with two seconds left on the clock. Uh, the young man, uh, he, he played hard, played hard the entire game. But unfortunately for him, that, that one play kind of sticks out uh, to him. Uh, we will get better. That's something that we can, uh, um, can overcome. But it, it very easily could have been a 14-14 game. I go back to the fumble um, in the first quarter. And uh, if we don't have that, maybe it, it is 14-14 when we go in at halftime with us coming out. And I think we did come out the, the first drive and scored. Coach, uh, a couple of things. Uh, this is kind of long and drawn out, but it's to get to a point. Um, back in 12, I saw you build a team that was simulating. I saw Alcorn win two back-to-back -back championships, and then, you know, nobody continues just to, to win every year. Uh, you've already stated that, that we have a young team this year. Uh, I know Brandon Duncan is a sophomore. Am I right? That's right. Okay. And uh, is Dante a sophomore? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you see yourself building for that championship uh, with the players that you have now? Uh, maybe by the time that Brandon is a senior, just like Ben Anderson was, <laughs> you see where I'm going? I, I, I'm hoping that it matures a lot faster. You know, I, I've got some great seniors uh, sitting here with me. Guys, it's been tried and true. Um, we are a young football team. Uh, my secondary, uh, the, the senior guy in the secondary is, is, uh, is not playing for us. So I've got two sophomores that played a little for us last year. And I can't call them redshirt freshmen because they did play some last year, but two sophomores that's playing for us. And Dave White is probably the, the senior guy on the, uh, in the secondary. So we are a young football team. You know, I, I kind of reckon it to this bubble. You know, every, every few years, teams have to rebuild. Now, during those rebuilding stages, it, it's probably some of the most difficult times that you go through because you're used to winning or you have won, and what you want to do at your earliest convenience is get back to that winning uh, stage. And that's where we want to be. If you look at us last year, which we were young last year, just like we are right now, we competed, and we are competing in games. I don't think the score in this last week's game really indicate the type of effort and how we competed uh, um, in this last game against our state. I don't think so. 
So it's almost like a, a young lady having labor pains. She's getting ready to give birth to a child. Doing those labor pains is probably some of the most difficult times that she has to go through. But if you interview ladies, once they have that baby and they lay that baby in her arms, she forget all about the labor pains. And that's what it's going to take for us. It's going to take us getting through these labor pains of youth and putting together a team that's going to be more. When we won in 12, we had 20-some seniors. I think we only have, what, nine? About nine seniors now. Uh, if you look at Alcorn, Alcorn last year had 21. They graduated or 20-something uh, seniors. Gremlin also, 20-something seniors. So it means a lot to have the experience either coming from a transfer or coming from a junior college. Uh, but it means a lot to have those type players, and that's where we're out. We're out this week also. The coaches are out recruiting, looking at junior college players for next year in the offensive line and in the defensive line. So we realize where we are. And the thing that we, we, we're going to do is we're going to keep building on what we have because once, once those labor pains are over with, it's going to be something yeah, pretty to look at. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, uh, and I believe you, Coach, here because I saw you do it in 12. Uh, now, that's our future. Let's talk about our present, the, the rest of the season. These two young men right here, uh, 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 we've seen them for three years. They are, and I mean from my personal experience, I feel like I've coached them. And, and, and uh, they are both outstanding. That's right. Now, Cody had an outstanding game this last game. Yes. And Cody, how many yards did you get? If I'm not mistaken, 142. Okay. And you should have accumulated quite a few yards over the season. Uh, Willie, you um, got how many yards? 300 and what did you get the the game before last, the, how many the, yards? These guys are tied for third in the SWAC with the number of yards. They are so in 232. Rece yeah, yeah uh -huh. in, in, in okay. receiving, they're, they're neck and neck. Okay. So, so th that's what I'm saying. But if you look at the, 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 the point that I made early on uh, about there's only one guy that played in the secondary for us last year, the strength is the wide receiver in his shows. Now we got a quarterback that's getting him the ball. He's only had one turnover uh, for the five games, which is mm -hmm. outstanding yes. compared mm -hmm. to what we did last year. But he's getting these guys the ball, and they, they're the seniors. Both of these guys are seniors, right. and they know how to play the game. They know how to play in the swag. They know the speed of the game. Therefore, they're, they're putting up good numbers week in and week out. Right. And, Coach, I'm saying that to say this. Projecting myself into the end of the season, I can visualize both of these young men having a thousand yards with the games that we got left to play, knowing that our strength is in the passing game and as the SWAC is a passing conference. I, I would not be surprised to see both of them come out with a thousand yards at the end of the season. Uh, I, I concur. Okay, thank you. Now, another outstanding player that you have that we haven't seen here yet, and I think he needs to to come one week, and that's uh, Jamie uh, Gillum. Gillum. Jamie Gillum, it, it, huh? He has, okay, this year? Yeah. Oh, okay, I apologize then. Yeah, yeah Jamie's uh, he's been, he's been here. Us. Okay, yeah. uh, Jamie, in that last game, averaged 45 yards a punt. Uh, game before last, he hit two field goals. It, we normally don't have one athlete that does all the kicking, you know, and this young man is a sophomore too, is, is he yes, not? He is. You know, so we got him to look for in the future toward that championship because those are critical points that we need, uh, uh, field goal points. Well, you, you look at his kickoffs. He's kicking the ball in, on some yes. occasions out of the end zone or at least to the goal line, which helps us out. Uh, he's, he's punting the ball tremendously. He's actually leading the swack in punting right I now. I thought so. You know. And, uh, you know, he had a little, had a little uh, challenge early on in the season with his field goals, but he's bounced back and he's kicking field goals for us now. Uh, he didn't have any in his past game, but the, the week before he did kick a couple of field goals. So Jamie is a very, very bright spot. Normally what I want to do is I want to have a kicker and a punter, uh, which we do have a kicker and a punter on, on but the, the punter is a freshman. 
And the way Jamie's from Watson came, Chapel too, from, huh? uh, from a from, local school that yes, you're right, right. Yes, one from Chapel and, uh -huh. and the other kicker is from Pine Bluff High. Uh -huh. And uh, but Jamie is kicking the ball so well, uh, it's it's hard to pull him off the field and say right. let one of the freshmen's kick. Uh, he's doing a great job and he's enjoying himself. Thank you, Coach. All right, if there's not any more questions, next home contest for your Lady Lions soccer team will be on Friday, October 14th, and Sunday, October 16th, with UAPB taking on Mississippi Valley State on Friday at 3 p.m., and Alcorn State on Sunday at a 1 p.m. start with both matches slated for Palm Free Stadium. So come on out and cheer your Lady Lions on to victory. Let's give Miss Nikki and RJs a round of applause for hosting us today. All right, once again, thank you for coming out. Once again, thank you for coming out and having lunch with us. Until we meet again, keep those emails and tweets coming in and have a wonderful Golden Lion Day.